Columbine, an extensive and well-founded account by Dave Thorne on the tragedy. Much of the country was watching the standoff unfold. None of the earlier school shootings had been televised. Few American tragedies had. This was the first time that Americans had seen such a catastrophe televised. Millions of people had sat speechless in horror as a nightmare unfolded before them on their local news channels. Students were wary at first, but let their guards down quickly. Reporters seemed so understanding. The kids would regret it. After all the shots were fired, all the blood was spilled, and most of the tears were shed, the students needed to voice their emotions. And who listened with the greatest intent? Media reporters, every kind. Their pens arms spin webs of lies. All the Columbine myths worked that way, and they all sprang to life incredibly fast. Myths and conspiracies cast a thick shadow over the high school. Words such as trench coat mafia and teenage revolution were flying through the air with only inklings of the truth. Because of how big the media had portrayed the incident, Columbine became a definitive name to any school shooting thereafter. Fuselet would play the leading role in understanding the Columbine killers, but it was luck that drove him to the case. If his son Brian had not been attending that high school, Fuselet would not have even been assigned to the investigation. One man could see through the mist of myths, though. Dwayne Fuselet. The FBI hostage negotiator had taken a lead role in the police on the day of Columbine, and a greater role as a psychologist in the investigation afterwards. He never could have negotiated with Eric and Dylan, but his research on the two kids shined a light on why it all happened. Fuselet quickly became known internally as the expert on the two boys. Kate Batten was leading the day-to-day -day investigation. But Fuselet understood the perpetrators. He returned to Eric's journal over and over, and then to Dylan's, pouring over every line. A much acclaimed psychologist, Fuselet revealed the motives of the killers and discerned the truth from the lies. Kate Batten presented the how of the crime. Fuselet unveiled the why. His legacy goes beyond being just a great detective. He is also one of the most open-minded psychologists. Dave Sanders' daughters were angry. Dave Sanders had held on for well over three hours from, when, from what Angie, one of his daughters, understood. Her father could have been safe. The police had reacted too slowly to the chaos in Columbine. SWAT teams were told too late to enter the school which in turn only multiplied the casualties and prolonged the pain. Dave Sanders, a beloved teacher, spent over three hours bleeding out in that science room, when he could have been rescued in minutes if the SWAT had responded more quickly. Dave Sanders could have been saved. Columbine also changed police response to attacks. In 2003, it released the Active Shooter Protocol, there is one objective. Neutralize the shooters. Stop them or kill them. Change was needed. The police needed new and improved tactics for situations such as Columbine. No more perimeters or hostage negotiations if the shooters have no desire to cooperate. If they want war, then give them war. Linda Monzer is angry. This is how she sees it. Linda is angry at the cops, the school, the church she finally abandoned. The cops let her down repeatedly, forming a perimeter, letting Dave Sanders die, and covering up the search warrant. Sheriff Stone, what a bungling buffoon. Linda Mazur is not the only one still angry with what happened. Much of the victims may never be able to get over the shooting. It is not only the tragedy that pesters their memory, but the spectators, newspapers, and police officers saying that the victims had received justice when they seemingly never did.
The shootings were an event that occurred, but did not set the tone for the rest of my life. The majority of the victims, though, were able to heal the scars they were, they were left. One in particular, Patrick Ireland, recovered extraordinarily from a debilitating injury. Escaping permanent paralysis, Patrick went on to live his life to the fullest, staying on his own two feet. I knew the world was there all the time. The loving world was there all the time. What drove Patrick to soldier on was not that just that he had overcome adversity, but also that people who loved him were there for him all along. He could have curled up in a corner, mourning what had happened, but he instead picked up the pieces and rebuilt himself. His family, friends, and those who would become his friends needed him. To be happy and successful is the biggest F you to them, she, Valschner, says. They want to be dead. I'm alive. You're dead. I get to be happy. Another quote from Valschner, which pretty much summarizes the entire point of what Dave Cohen was trying to get across. I don't wonder anymore. The more you keep second guessing and asking questions, the more it hinders your progress. If I let Columbine ruin my life, then they've succeeded. If you're going to be bitter and angry and contain a hurt, then you're dead inside. If I shut down, if I let my emotions overcome me, then I'm dead inside. The media is not trustworthy at the beginning of any tragedy, and you can let the memories haunt you forever, or you can learn from them and move on.